Hi, and welcome to Jankens Guard on Risk, the YouTube channel dedicated to, dedicated to the theory and practice of risk management. In this video, we're going to talk about how to model a cash flow hedge, which is a form of hedge accounting. So it's time to get practical about hedge accounting and, and show how we can incorporate that into our financial forecasts and risk evaluations. So uh, for more on hedge accounting, please consult my book, Corporate Foreign Exchange Risk Management, co-authored with Alpha Vinison and Lars Oxelheim. There's also more information on my webpage, riskbudgeting.se. And as they say here on YouTube, please like and subscribe. So to recap uh, quickly, this has been covered in other tutorials. Uh, hedge accounting is a way to account for derivatives, financial derivatives, uh, which is different than from fair value accounting, which is how they normally enter, enter the books. And um, we just have to try to understand the basic problem that is uh, being addressed by, by um, a cash flow hedge, which is then the focus of, there are other forms of uh, hedge accounting as well. Uh, we're looking at cash flow hedge in this particular video. What it tries to do is that uh, to, to solve this problem, that derivatives are fair value accounted as per the uh, accounting standards, right? Whereas the business transactions, the cash flow that they hedge are not. You know, the, the, um, so there's a mismatch, creating artificial excess volatility in net income, which is uh, not appreciated by, by corporates usually. So contrary to the purpose of it all, I mean, we we're trying to eliminate or reduce the, um, the market risk in, a, in, a, in an anticipated transaction, right? So we're stabilizing performance in that sense, but because we're doing that, we get more volatility in a different place in, in, uh, in our financials, right? Which is uh, earnings, which is where these uh, financial or fair value gains and losses have to be reported. So uh, any change in the fair value of this derivative has to be reported in net income. That's the standard rule here. But there is no corresponding entry then for the transactional cash flow that we anticipate and, and which is, you know, we're trying to protect with this hedge. So hedge accounting is for those managers who find this uh, undesirable and want to be rid of uh, that excess volatility in net income. So in a way you can look at it uh, as, as, as a way of restoring the matching, matching principle to some extent whereby we uh, in between now and the maturity of the contract, we keep these, we allow these, uh, these gains and losses to accumulate in a different place uh, outside net income and only release it back into net income when it finally matures when the hedges cash settles. And the, and the business transaction as well. So uh, that would be the, the purpose then of, of uh, hedge, hedge accounting, keeping net income tidy and clean and, and restoring this uh, matching principle. So what we're here to do, uh, our business for now is to upgrade the, the corporate decision support to our risk model uh, to handle a cash flow hedge so that we can understand our financials better and we can evaluate the hedging decision better uh, and we can make a more informed decision on whether or not the decisions, uh, sorry, the benefits of, of hedge accounting outweigh the costs, which we know are substantial. So we have, we want to be able to see beforehand, you know, what kind of financial forecasts are we looking at if we do hedge accounting, whereas if we go by traditional fair value accounting, right? So this is within risk budgeting where, where risk is understood as being a function or, or we find ways to describe risk in the fun, within the financial forecasts. Um, and we connect that to strategic goals. Uh, we want to make sure the investment program is uh, funded and, and the strategy optimally executed. So this is the proper setting for derivatives and therefore also the proper setting for uh, any evaluation of a cash flow hedge. So uh, as always, we're looking to make the, the model or keep the model IFRS consistent, meaning we want to model the financial forecasts in such a way that they accurate, accurately reflect accounting, known accounting principles, including those of, uh, those of the standards that cover hedge accounting. So um, we need to add those to the model. And to, from, from before we have the fair value accounting entries already in there. So we're talking about a few additions. 
So with fair value accounting, you would have uh, some of these lines in the statements to uh, take care of the impact of derivatives on financials. You, you have realized and unrealized gains and losses. You have derivative assets and derivative liabilities. You need those to sort of accommodate the, the effects of derivatives and keep the model balancing. With hedge accounting, we're going to add two more. Uh, we're actually going to create the, uh, or set up the comprehensive income statement. You, you need the other comprehensive income statement to, that's where, you know, that's the other mechanism involved here. Uh, as opposed to using net income and retained earnings, we're going to model um, things through com comprehensive income statement and a hedging reserve in equity. So that, that constitutes an alternative mechanism for dealing with gains and losses related to derivatives. So to get the model uh, to, to handle uh, this, we need to uh, instruct it to mark to market, meaning valuing the derivative pos position each quarter end in the, in the model's forecast. So if we're talking four quarters uh, you know, ahead in the forecast, at each of those quarter ends, you have to uh, carry out in the model a, a marking to market. So we apply the whatever we consider to be the, the right valuation formula for that derivative. Well, we instruct the model to keep track of that, that uh, formula so that we can, in each, at each quarter end, you know, we run the forecasted inputs for that formula through it and we derive a fair value, an estimated fair value at that future point in time. So let's take uh, the fair value here of a forward contract. Uh, it allows us to keep track or, or, or model the fair value of, of, of a forward hedge, sorry, a forward contract. And uh, you, you need some inputs here, the forward price at a future point in time. You need the uh, you know, time to maturity. You need to know when the contract matures and you need a discount rate and so on. So, so these are the inputs to the formula that we need to forecast. So, so we're, it's like we're here, you know, uh, and looking ahead, we're making a forecast and we know that at some point uh, this contract will mature and make settle in between, it will be revalued or marked to market on at various quarters ends, you know. So that is the perspective here. We want the model to, in the forecast then, because we're, we're here making a forecast of all the way, you know, to whatever, whatever time horizon the model has. And we want the model to do correct fair value accounting in all quarters of the forecast. So it would look, this has been covered in other tutorials. So I refer to those for the, for the more lengthy explanation, uh, but we're dealing with support lines here where we come, we come up with forecasts of all the inputs needed to carry out a valuation, a fair value, value uh, fair value estimate of, um, of this derivative position, right? So you have things like the interest rate and, and spot price. You can derive a, a forward price based on that, and etc. So so you generate forecasts of all the necessary inputs, and then you apply the formula in your Excel spreadsheet. So here we do that, it's just an application of the formula in a series of steps, and we derive a fair value of that forward contract. So we're just assuming a particular scenario here that materializes. So, so we're going to evaluate many of those and uh, learn from those and, and understand the costs and benefits of different risk management strategies. So in this particular scenario, there is indeed a, a very large uh, valuation effect here on these contracts uh, because uh, there's a significant uh, shift in, in, in the price going in a different direction than, than um, what we have locked in here. And um, so there's a substantial fair value now in the book. So the question is, what happens to that? Where does it go? How does it ultimately impact income and, and equity? But for now, think of it as forecasting the inputs deriving them using the formula. And these are the fair values then that we're going to send into the financials. So it's going to look something like this when we set up the model using the chart of accounts. And we have now all these new lines in place, derivative assets, liabilities, gains and losses, et cetera. And uh, here you have the fair value then. It goes straight into derivative liabilities because it's a loss. So we report it as a liability. And any change in this liability is going to be fair value gain or loss, you know, over here in net income, right? So here's the accumulated 
or the actual fair value of the position, any change is reported here. And it matches because we're making sure that looking at assets and liability versus total equity, we have the same sort of numbers. So it's all good for now, uh, except that we also want to do hedge accounting or we'll be able to do so if we want to. So we want, first of all, user control over whether or not we're going to apply fair value accounting or hedge accounting. So here's the, the, the risk you know, being, being hedged or, or the underlying sort of uh, performance of the business, just a revenue stream. And we're saying that, look, we, for whatever reason, we want to hedge the fourth quarter, uh, you know, the price exposure in that. I mean, realism is not the point here. We are just saying that, okay, there's going to be a hedge in the fourth quarter. And we have user control here over the accounting treatment. So there are two choices here, hedge, hedge accounting, and fair value accounting. I mean, to be clear, a hedge, a derivative is always fair valued. So, so by using the term here, hedge accounting, it doesn't mean that we're not doing fair valuation. It's just that we're not going to treat it according to the standard uh, fair value accounting rules. So here, for example, we have selected fair value accounting and we're looking at um, the net income line here, derivative fair value gain loss. And now there's a corresponding line in the other comprehensive income set, which is located just below the, the normal uh, net income statement. So the question is a, a matter of where does this change in fair value go? And because we have selected fair value accounting, it's supposed to go into net income. That's how you normally supposed to account for derivatives. There's nothing going to be appearing here because we're, that is only used whenever we apply hedge accounting. So we use one of the if statements to uh, check whether we have selected fair value accounting. If, if yes, then the, chair, the change in fair value goes here. So since it, it will indicate now that it does so, we see it here. Whereas this is asking, this check here is, is asking if hedge accounting has been selected. If so, show change in fair value, otherwise zero. In this case, hedge accounting is not selected. Therefore, it will pick a zero on this one, which is what we're seeing. All right, we switch to hedge accounting and, and uh, very correctly, we're not, the same check is carried out once more, but, but it finds the opposite now. It finds that we haven't selected fair value accounting, so zero here. Uh, we have selected that hedge accounting now, therefore, show change in fair value. So it's a simple matter of directing the, um, the gains and losses to the, to the appropriate place in, in, the, um, in the model, right? And here, uh, again, you know, under the assumption that we have selected fair value accounting, whatever numbers produced by, by fair valuing these, these derivatives is going to go into uh, retained earnings now because that is the equity account connected to net income. So we see it here. Here. And there's nothing in the hedging reserve because we haven't activated hedge accounting. Whereas if we do, we now have switched to hedge accounting, boom, the numbers go here. Go here. And we're just linking it up to these statements. We, we, we don't need a, you know, the if, the if statements, the conditions are, are in the other comprehensive income statement and in net income. We don't need them here because these are already linked up to those. So the question is just which channel, which mechanism are we using? Are we using other comprehensive income slash hedging reserve, or are we using um, net income slash retained earnings? So with hedge accounting activated, it goes into here. That's you know where you stash away the gains and losses. In the meantime, you know you're you're hiding hiding them out of out of view in the net income statement, and this is where they are <laughs> stashed in the meantime. Right? So so with hedge accounting now, we're, we're uh, we've activated that. Here and so any gain and loss is going to appear in a new statement that we've introduced for this purpose. Then the other comprehensive income, so that's where it goes. Nothing in the at, at, the, at these quarters ends, you know, the uh, because we've instructed the model to use the other mechanism. So so this one here, as intended by Edge Canon, right? We're keeping net income free of these effects, whereas the realized effect ultimately does go there. That is fine <laughs> because we were hedging a cash flow in this quarter. So we're fine showing the net income effect then. But we don't want the, the volatility here in between. We are sort of putting that here, which we consider an improvement then, or, or many do, you know, even though it's clearly visible here as well. So, and again, showing here that 
hedging reserves is where they we where these accumulate. They are just sitting side sideline here, not impacting retained earnings, which is just you know reflecting the commercial cash flows here because that's the other, other input uh, at this point. So, and again balancing. So we're going to be happy. And with a clean net income statement now, where where only the realized effect is is ever included. So we have now equipped the model with the right kind of uh, capabilities for proactive evaluation of, of hedge accounting so that we can improve our modeling of financials generally. We can improve certain kinds of risk analysis and the cost benefit analysis of hedge accounting. So we will now change possibly the scenarios and run many of them to see what things look like and, and, and um, select our optimal strategy accordingly, right? So. For example, do we really think that the uh, if we stress the model and, and see what kind of net income effects that would generate in, in without hedge accounting, maybe maybe it doesn't look so bad after all, and we are going to be fine with that. You know, you, you can make more informed uh, decisions with a forward-looking model like this. So recapping, uh, hedge accounting is a way to keep fair value gains and losses out of net income, just out of sight, out of mind. You can uh, evaluate the benefits of, of hedge accounting in a better way, um, using a risk model equipped with the necessary functionality. And you integrate that in, in forward-looking financial forecasts. And, and uh, we need some user control over which statements are activated or used to accommodate these fair value gains and losses while keeping the whole thing self-balancing. Obviously, we never allow that not to happen. You know, we, we always uh, make sure that happens and then we move, move on to other adventures, right? So, all right, that was it for today. Thank you so much. and. Um, yeah, one more thing, by the way. <laughs> if you have my books, please please check them out. And respecting.se for more information, please like and subscribe. And have a good day.